Welcome, everybody. My name is Kevin Kuros. I'm a physician in Boston. I'm, I'm really excited to be here today to discuss OCT, keeping it simple, OCT workflows, and artificial intelligence. I'm here for this symposium with my good friend Jonathan Hill and with Dwayne Pinto. We're excited to share with you some new data that's being presented to TCT. And Jonathan's going to show us the future of the OCT technology in terms of making our life easier with regard to how we do a good job to get durable PCI results for our patients. I'm going to kick it off today with insights from Light Lab, which is an exciting project that we've been lucky to be part of, really focusing on the OCT MLD Max workflow and how it improves PCI decision making and efficiency. The next several slides are going to span over a few phases of this program, some of which has been presented at Euro PCR and some exciting new data which was presented, which was presented at TCT during this meeting. My disclosures are here. You really can't open any imaging discussion without giving apparent credence to the fact that intravascular imaging is well known to improve PCI outcomes. This is one of what I could chosen as a hundred slides that demonstrate that cardiovascular outcomes are improved with image guided PCI. In this particular example, this is a meta-analysis which shows a tremendous trend toward reduction in cardiovascular death when imaging is used to guide PCI revascularizations. These individual trials were all positive and I think they're highlighted by IVIS XPL and Ultimate, which were really the main randomized studies in the imaging space, which prove without question the value to image guided PCIs in regard to improving the durability of PCI and we're excited in the coming year to have Lumion 4, which is the ongoing surveillance for OCT-guided PCI and complex patient subsets. More on that to come, hopefully, in future TCT meetings. As we think about the emerging evidence of the clinical benefits of OCT, image-guided PCI has been shown in randomized studies and also in registries to have a reduction in all endpoints, including the major one we care about, cardiovascular death. You can see that OCT-guided PCI is associated with a significant reduction in MACE in this particular registry study and all the data in this track, in the space tracks in the same direction. As we think now about adoption of image-guided PCI, unfortunately, worldwide, the numbers for image-guided PCIs are hovering around 14%. We lag in many countries behind Japan, which does imaging in upwards of 95% of their PCIs. And I think there are multiple reasons for this, but in large part, what we've tried to do with regard to image-guided PCI, especially in the OCT space, is really work to make image-guided PCI simple, reproducible, in a way that can be done in a prescriptive fashion so we can teach it to ourselves, teach our colleagues, and teach it to our fellows. In line with that goal, we developed MLD Max with a series of colleagues to help us understand how to do an image OCT-guided PCI in a very simplified way. This is really designed to make OCT easy, teachable, and most importantly, consistent. In the MLD Max OCT workflow, the pre-PCI OCT is used to strategize how we're going to treat the artery. We define the morphology with regard to whether there's need for advanced vessel prep. We determine the length of the stent, trying the stent normal to normal whenever possible. And the diameter of the stent is chosen by the OCT with EEL sizing in a much more high fidelity way than we're able to do based on the angiogram. After choosing whether your vessel prep is going to be advanced, the length of the stent and the diameter, we place the stent, we post dilate it based on the diameters we've measured, and we very quickly do a post PCI OCT to determine if we're optimized. During the optimization phase, we look for the presence or absence of medial dissections. Understanding that medial dissections, especially when they're at the distal edge of the stent, are ones that are associated with a hazard of worse outcomes for patients. We look at stent apposition not to the extent that it drives a major problem in outcomes, but if you have to retreat the patient, if they have major malopost stents, it can make it difficult to recross in the future. And really the holy grail in terms of good outcomes is making sure that the stents are expanded well relative to the distal and proximal reference segments. We really like to see 80% expansion, but optimally we prefer to see 90% whenever it's possible. This is just a really brief overview of the MLD Max workflow. And we and others have gone through many tutorials which are available online if you have more interest in learning this in a very detailed way. So with that in mind, really trying to understand the value of an OCT guided prescripted MLD Max workflow, we and four of the other investigators embarked on the Light Lab program in partnership with Abbott. This program was meant to assess the impact of OCT MLD Max on PCI workflow and decision-making. 
And this multi-phase program has really started to highlight some of the true benefits in terms of how imaging informs what we do when we're treating patients. One of the cool things about this, which came out of the first phase of Light Labs, if you look across 40 operators, readily and even in the first phase, early in the experience, OCT was being applied to type C lesions, harder lesions in the majority of cases. And John and I will talk a little bit about the application of OCT to multivessel disease, CTOs, and bifurcations if we have time at the end. So with that in mind now, the clinical initiatives of Light Lab are the following. There was a baseline phase where we actually just looked to see how people were practicing every day, usual practice. Then there was an intensive training on MLD Max where physicians were learned to do this. I'll tell you, MLD Max is easy. It doesn't take that long to figure out how to apply it. And then after that, we went through various phases, looking at the impact on decision-making, look at the impact on proficiency. And what we're excited to share on this meeting is how when you take an OCT workflow, which is optimized, how we see benefits in terms of the number of procedural steps, safety, efficiency, and even equipment use. And I'll share that in a little bit. In the last phase, we have workflow expansion, which is ongoing now. We're doing the analysis currently, looking at the use of OCT and things like CTOs, multivessel disease, and complex bifurcation. So with this in mind, OCT was shown in the initial phase to dramatically impact PCI decision-making. As you move through the various aspects of pre-PCI planning and post-PCI optimization, you see that the information gleaned from the OCT changes our decision-making and our case planning 88% of the time compared to what we would have done if we relied just on the angiogram alone. The majority of that impact is seen in the pre-PCI planning. If we actually plan the case appropriately, the majority of the change in what we're gonna do comes in things like lesion type, vessel prep, stent length, stent diameter, and you actually have less to do on the back end. This is the difference between an OCT guided PCI versus an OCT endorsed one. You'll see if you actually plan the case appropriately, you get it right up front and you have less optimization to do. We'll touch on that in a little bit in later bits of data. So thinking about cases where the OCT identified calcium, the M, the morphology in MLD max, when the OCT identified calcium that the angiogram didn't see, 47% of the time, it changed our vessel prep strategy, where we escalated oftentimes to things like cutting, scoring balloons, or atherectomy or laser. So the information that the OCT gives you dramatically changes planning and vessel prep strategy in regard to trying to maximize your stent expansion by modifying lesions which are not going to expand well. Additional to that, as you look at the application of OCT to type C lesions, as we move from baseline phase to the early phases of it, operators became very comfortable after a small number of cases using OCT in more complex lesion subsets. We'll talk about that in detail in a little bit. Additionally, the pullback quality of OCT improves relatively quickly. The majority of the time, 40 different operators, many of them new users, were able to get high yield, completely interpretable OCT images, both on the pre-PCI OCT pullbacks and on the post-PCI OCT pullbacks. This demonstrates the easy feasibility of using this technology across multiple users in real world practice in majority type C lesions. Additional to that, the time spent on the OCT in the early phases decreased with a little bit of practice. We went from seven and a half minutes early on in the pre-PCI OCT to getting it down to six minutes. Five minutes went to 3.9 minutes. So with about 10 extra minutes in the early phases, we're able to see you're, you're, you're getting a high quality image guided PCI with little additional use in time. And I'll share some data from the efficiency piece of this in a little bit. The other thing which was kind of neat is if you actually did the entire OCT workflow, a pre-PCI OCT, plan the case, and then the post-PCI optimization, you use less dye than if you put the stent in on the angiogram and just check it on the back end with the OCT. As I spoke about before, this is the difference between an OCT plan case, a rashly plan case, versus one where you use the imperfect angiogram and then try to endorse it on the back end with your post-PCI OCT run in isolation. It really lends credence to the value in terms of planning the case prescriptively upfront with an OCT image guided information. So now thinking about angiography versus OCT optimized MLD max workflow, this is the new data which is presented at TCT. This compares baseline practice compared to practice where there was a focus on using the OCT to improve efficiency. If you compare case planning between baseline, angiogram guided, and after a little bit of practice with using the MLD max workflow, 
The question was, how are we doing in terms of time and efficiency? Is this helping us? Is this hurting us? What is it doing to our ability to carry out cases in an efficient and very clear way? And if you look right on, this was done with a propensity score matching, where we took cases that were matched in the baseline phase to workflow optimization over 26 features that we knew would impact timing. And fun things came out of this. If you have a training program and a fellow was present, that was one of the variables which was matched for. And so it was really neat that we started to learn a lot about the things through this process that impact case planning, case timing, and case duration. This is really meant to be able to compare an OCT guided efficiency workflow versus not using it all. And I'll share the new data with you next. So we saw that the OCT MLD Max strategy and this prescriptive workflow actually reduced radiation exposure with no change in contrast utilization. Comparing angio guided to workflow, you see a reduction in the radiation exposure with milligrays, similar fluoroscopy time, and no additional contrast. I found this amazing because you're going to add one angiogram picture by doing that co-registered pre-PCI OCT. Despite that, the multiple other efficiencies and clarities you get from this technology allow you to do the case without increasing contrast load. This has been one of the things which has been thought of as a deficiency for OCT. Geez, I don't want to use more contrast. I'm going to use intravascular imaging or not use any imaging instead. This workflow really and smart application of it really allows us to understand that you can get the case done with no added contrast and with actually less radiation because you're not relying on an imperfect angiogram and imperfect fluoroscopy. You're getting high quality data in a much more efficient and deliberate way. Additional to that, we see that OCT MLD Max increased by one shot the number of pre-PCI diagnostic views. We have an increased reliance on the accurate OCT information. I've seen this myself in cases. If I see a lesion and I'm not really clear what's going on and I'm planning to do OCT anyway, I don't take two more orthogonal views, knowing that they're going to be relatively useless compared to the information I'm going to get on my single co-registered OCT run that's going to help me to plan my case. If we look now at how long it takes to do an OCT MLD Max case, this is incredibly exciting. You can see through the various aspects of case from angiography to transition, Compared to the angiography group, there is no addition here because you're not doing one in the angio. You have a pre-PCI OCT, which takes about six minutes, and then the post-PCI optimization, it takes about four minutes. So the increase in time to use OCT to plan your case is only nine minutes. And for us to be able to get a stent implanted perfectly, normal to normal, well-sized, with 90% expansion and no edge dissection, and likely cut down the hazard of stent failure in half, as has been shown in all the randomized imaging trials. In my mind, if someone is putting an LED stent in my mother, this is nine minutes completely well spent to try to get an optimized outcome for the patients that we're treating. Additional to that, if you look at the various aspects of the case, the morphology-based vessel prep with OCT led to less initial vessel prep because the pre-PCI OCT planning allows you to know two things. A lot of times we'll take a predilation balloon effectively to be a surrogate for sizing the artery. You don't need to do that if you have OCT because you get high fidelity EEL information on vessel size. Additional to that, if you see a soft plaque or potentially thrombus, you may not need to do vessel preparation. You can consider direct stenting because you know with certain clarity what the morphology is. Because MLD Max prescriptively asks to do a post dilation after the stent is implanted, it's not surprising that the OCT arm had more post dilation because it's part of the workflow. And on the back end, because you see things you don't anticipate with the OCT, you'll do a little bit additional optimization compared to angiogram where we effectively stick our head in the sand and think, think that things were okay. And so really the other neat thing about this is that the number of lesions which had unplanned additional treatment were less with the OCT. We suspect that's because you're stenting normal to normal. You're not landing in tikva. You're not finding you have edge dissections because you're getting into normal tissue. There's lots of hypothesis generating aspects of what we think is happening here, which will be a part of future study. So we think about that also in terms of device and stent utilization, because we're predilating less because we know the size of anatomy, not surprisingly, we see less use of predilation balloons when we use MLD Max. We see more use of NC balloons because we're asking the post dilate at the end of every implantation. And the cool part about this, which is really a cost savings potentially, 
is when you plan the case with OCT, you see a statistically significant reduction in the number of stents. And so understanding anatomy, getting to normal, normal, working to lessen the chances of edge dissection, potentially is gonna mean you're gonna place less stents in patients. And so with that in mind, by way of summary, OCT MLD Max guided versus angiogram guided PCI has the following things we found. A dramatic impact on PCI diagnosis and decision-making. We see escalation in calcium-based vessel preparation when you actually find and understand the calcium burden in a high fidelity manner. Similar contrast utilization and fluoroscopy time. Decreased radiation exposure. Optimized product utilization with a nod to the fact that we saw fewer stents used. And most importantly, precise case planning and decision-making with only nine minutes added to the procedure time. This has been presented in poster format uh, and also an oral presentation at TCT this meeting. And I must acknowledge the multiple investigators in the Abbott team who helped us carry out this study. Thanks very much for the uh, opportunity to present here. And I'd love to hear Jono's uh, take on this because he's gonna talk to us about how this is even gonna get easier with new additions of software, which is gonna make the case planning simple and easy. Thanks, Jono. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. I think this is an outstanding piece of work. Really, I think it's really going to set the the path of other geographies. So I think we, we are looking to do a similar exercise in Europe. I think it, it's really going to catch on the you know, workflow optimization. I think the data is really compelling. Um, I mean, I'm sort of struck by the, the radiation message uh, I think is is a very important one uh, that we need to, uh, you know, I think that needs to be emphasized, especially as we're going to, to be introducing workflow optimization with OCT for much more complex cases, I think, as I think we're going to discuss. The contrast question, which I think has been one of the main barriers for adoption, uh, I think this, this, this study has re really answered that question. The time uh, issue and this supplementary time uh, of you know nine minutes. I mean, I, I know that you know interventional cardiologists are an inpatient group of people, um, but you know I think I, as you say, you know if it was your LAD, that extra nine minutes uh, is is time well spent. I think we're what we're going to see is that when AI is introduced into this workflow, into an MLD Max workflow. That I, I I would not be surprised if there it, it becomes uh, almost no difference at all in the time. I think just talking a bit more about the complex uh, cases, and maybe, maybe we can we can expand this discussion. I think the calcium modification is really one of the, the hot topics, and I, and I know we've got lots of new new tools at the moment, especially IVL. And I think OCT and, and a workflow um, optimization with calcified vessels has, is really has been really impactful. Could, if I could ask a question, uh, Kevin, if you yeah. when you started this process, what what do you think in the investigators who you were in, inviting to be part of this sort of light lab um, light lab uh, uh, group? What was their main barrier to adoption of intravascular imaging prior to doing this? You know, if you, you ask, yeah, I think, you know, from my belief is it really was, I was never trained to do this in fellowship. And, you know, Ziad Ali has a great slide, which they put together from the CRF fellows group, which just queried fellows, what is your self-reported competency for using physiology and imaging? and less than half of them felt like they could go out the next day and practice and do an IVIS and OCT got a PCI. And so that's why we built MLD Max, because I think many of us were applying these technologies differently. Full disclosure, my first couple of years of using OCT and IVIS, I was an endorser. I planned the case based on the angiogram, I put the stent and I checked my work on the back end. I didn't know any different. And I think realizing the value of understanding morphology and landing zone and sizing up front, I'm a full believer now, but it takes a little bit of a discussion you have to get introduced to the concept. And the fun part about this for all the light lab investigators is once they started to apply this, the people you talked to, they found it was easy and everybody was all in with regard to, you know, being able to use this in real world practice. And so to get 40 doctors, many of whom were, many of whom were new users on board was really, really easy. 
And one of the things which I found actually interesting, I had a conversation as we, as our center was approached to do this and said, you know, we're going to start out with this de decision-making phase, the data I shared to you. We're just going to look to see how the OCT changes what you do in terms of prepping a vessel and sizing stents. I said, well, you know, guys, I've been doing OCT a long time now and I have this, I really retrained my eye and I think I'm going to be much, much better at sizing than I used to be. So let's, you know, cool. It may not show a difference with people like me, but there'll probably be some younger people in the study that have an image. And I bet that's where we're going to see the real benefit. The first bit of the decision-making data we saw was our personal data, where I was horrified. The OCT changed my personal planning with regard to sizing, diameter, and length 76% of the time. So my, like, you know, full of myself this that I was better at reading angiograms was immediately challenged. And at that point I was all in. I was going to school, working to use the OCT to help me do a better job. So at the point you've reached now in your practice, you have a, a very broad ranging practice from you know simple to complex lesions. What, what percentage of your cases now are you using this workflow? Is it, is it 100% or 10%? Where, 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 what, what's the number now? Yeah, so you know, we, we track this as a program in our monthly quality conference. And, and Duane will probably touch on this because I'm really interested in his perspective as a cath lab director. But as soon as the most recent randomized trials two years ago were published for the value of image guided PCI, the data in my mind was irrefutable. And our entire team with the back of our cath lab director got on board and said, you know, we as a program image about 30% of cases. Our complex PCI team was upwards of 70, but we really worked hard to get everybody trained and on board. And to do that, we put up posters in the lab. We had discussions on how to do OCT and IVIS guided PCI. And with that in mind, we now run as a program, not just in our chip program, but as an entire cath lab, we track it monthly. We never get below 80% with regard to image utilization. So the only reason I typically won't use it if I can't get a cath lab down there, I use OCT yeah. The high resolution and the computer assisted measurements just make it quick. I can't do an eye of this case as fast yet because I don't have automated measurements and the high res doesn't allow me to just know very quickly where to land to, what the sizing is, et cetera. So I think, you know, for us, it's OCT by default. The times I won't use OCT is in, you know, extensive subanimal dissections, difficult CTOs where we're traveling long yeah. distances in, 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 in subanimal planes. And one of the things which we developed, which you probably won't have a lot of time to talk about, but to do an OCT case, you don't add contrast because you're not taking as many angiogram shots. Old school cross practice was at the end of the case, I'd leave the wire in, I'd take a picture. I'd pull the wire yeah. back and I'd do 290 degree orthogonal views trying to make up for the fact the angiogram is deficient. I don't do that anymore. I do one co-registered run with the OCT. The wire is back far enough to make sure there's no distal edge dissection. And in a single frame picture done, I get the angiogram that's co-registered and I know with certainty what the edge is, the stent, the proximal segment, the left main look like. And so it's really not too surprising that we're not adding angiogram runs to this or contrast because if you use it smart, the angiogram really becomes a surrogate, which is quite a fun thing to see. Hi, Dwayne. Uh, if, if you had pre-procedural imaging with CT and you've got a single lesion, you know the physiology, maybe you've had a, a perfusion test beforehand, but it is possible to do an OCT-guided case with just two, two shots. You do your initial yep. setup shot, get your co-registered view, put your stent in, and then do your final run, and then you're done. So I think it may actually, you know, you, we may end up being actually even even faster than, than an angio-guided case because they're just taking up the time, taking lots more shots. Yeah, and I think and as you show us, you know, as AI improves the workflow, a lot of the mental uh, time that goes into interpolating where the EEL is and calcium, you're going to show us yeah. the way forward. And even that time of the case yeah. is going to be compressed quite substantially. Yeah, all, all, those, all that time sort of spent doing very precise readings of EELs in multiple different places uh, you know, it's all done just, you know, automatically, you know, in a snap. So, yep. yeah, yeah, I think it definitely is the way forward. Excellent. Well, I just got, I'm sorry, I was delayed. I just got done uh, doing a two-vessel PCI with 12 cc's of contrast because I used image guidance uh, in some <laughs> with creatinine of 2.8. So, uh, and it didn't, uh, I mean, I'm late for the for you guys, but it, 
uh, I think I would have taken longer um, had I been doing it the old way.